By the way, it's a good way to know if your bank is safe or not. Look at the ratio of insured deposits to total deposits. If that number is under, you know, like 30% or so, watch out because uh, that's vulnerable to a run. Yeah, you make a good point, Robert, about capital markets and banking. People tend to mush them together. They say it's all finance, but they're actually very different arenas of activity. And of the two, Banking is more important because, yeah, we all care about our stock portfolios and 401ks and all that. And I talk about some of the dangers there. But banks are actually where money is created. Everyone talks about the Fed. The Fed's printing all this money. The Fed's printing trillions of dollars. Well, they are, but they, they do it by buying securities of banks and they send the money to the banks. It does come out of thin air, but then the banks give it back to the Fed as excess reserves. So it's it's tens of trillions of dollars on the balance sheet, but it kind of sits there. It doesn't do the economy any good. The money that helps the economy comes out of commercial banks. They create uh, money too. So a run on the bank and all the connections among the banks is is actually the regulator's greatest fear. They don't want a sequential collapse of banks, and we saw that in the but Great Depression. If I can now, interrupt you there, sure. Jim, about the SVB, Silicon Valley Bank. Right. They, they were not supposed to do that, were they? They weren't supposed to bail them out one more time. And they broke the law. For well, SVB, I think that's on Valley Bank. That, well, that's right. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, that's all under investigation, but uh, it certainly looks that way. But here's, here's the thing that people uh, don't understand. You know, you have 100,000 or 200,000 in the bank. You're FDIC insured. Well, you are up to $250,000, you know, per account. 97% of the deposits in Silicon Valley Bank were not FDIC insured. They were over that limit. There were entities, including some um, some Bitcoin intermediaries, uh, some big Silicon Valley firms that had billions of dollars in, in, in Silicon Valley Bank. 97% were uninsured. By the way, it's a good way to know if your bank is safe or not. Look at the ratio of insured deposits to total deposits. If that number is under you know, like 30% or so, watch out because uh, that's vulnerable to a run. So we all remember grainy black and white pictures from the 1930s of, you know, usually men in overcoats with fedoras lined up in the rain to get their money out of a failing bank. Well, that was true. I mean, those, those, those things happen. Today, it happens in instantaneous time. We do it on an iPhone. We take an iPhone. We say, send the money here. And then we text our friends and say, get your money out. It happens. You don't need to stand in line. It all happens almost instantaneously. So the banks are, are very vulnerable. And uh, we talk about, again, the same idea that AI, in this context, everything's faster, quicker, out of control. The regulators can't stay on top of it. The regulators dealt with Silicon Valley Bank after the fact. What did they do? They guaranteed every bank deposit in America. This is to your point, Robert. They said, forget the insurance, forget the 250000 It's all good. By the way, they didn't say that on Friday night. Friday night, said, they said, anything over two fifty, we're giving you like a due bill, like an IOU, we'll get back to you. But by Sunday night, 48 hours later, they said, no, we guarantee everything. And then the, then the Fed guaranteed every treasury note in the in the world, even though they were worth seventy cents on the dollar because interest rates had gone up at the time, they said we'll guarantee we'll take them for a hundred cents on the dollar. Here's your here's your money. So they, they they have nothing left in the bag of tricks. Once you guarantee all the bonds and all the deposits, what else can you do when the next banking panic comes? And I talk about how that is coming and how AI will contribute to that. The reason I liked your whole thing on Silicon Valley Bank here is they bailed out the richest people on planet Earth. That's right. Whereas, and, and what you were saying in this book, that was Janet Yellen. Yes. Who, I, I wonder where, what planet she stepped off of. But anyway, uh, <laughs> she basically, she bailed out the richest guys on Earth. But what you're saying here, she only did that because the whole system was set to come down. I mean, that, that's what that's you're right. explaining. I, Great. It was accelerating. Yeah, I, 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 I call it crybaby cry baby weekend, and what I mean by that is Friday night they actually did the right thing, but you know the the um, uh, you know all the billionaires, all the Silicon Valley billionaires, the entrepreneurs, they all called the White House and said, you know, no, we're the ones getting hurt. We're going to shut down. Uh, you know, most of these startups failed anyway, by the way, but they've got to save all the startups, the payrolls, and the rent. And that White House said, okay, let's fix it, and they did. But they went against all their principles, all the laws. And they basically bailed out the billionaires. And that, that's exactly what happened. There's something, again, I'll use the technical term, but I can explain it in plain English. It's called the fallacy of composition. 
well, what is the fallacy of composition? What it means is that there are certain things that make perfectly good sense for an individual. They'll say, as an individual investor, yeah, this is a good thing to do. But if everybody does it, you destroy the markets. So again, a simple metaphor for that. Let's say you're at a baseball game and you know, there's a guy in front of you is a little taller than average. You can't see as well as you would like. So you stand up. Okay, you stand up and, you, and you, you can see better. When you stand up, you can see better. But now the guy behind you can't see. So he stands up and the guy behind him stands up. Next thing you know, 60,000 baseball fans are standing up and everybody's worse off because not only are you in the same position, but everyone's standing up. So in other words, the thing that makes sense for one person, stand up to get a better view, falls down when everybody does it. Now, what does that mean in terms of markets? Well, let's say the stock market's crashing. I mean, remember, uh, March uh, 2023, or sorry, March 2020, not that long ago, stock market fell 30% in one month. 30% in one month. So what do people do in that situation? Well, a lot of them are like, hey, you know what? I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to sell my stocks, go to cash, go to the sidelines, wait it out. And when it's over, I'll come back in and I'll buy stocks again. It's not that you never want to own stocks, but you might get out, go to cash, and uh, and then come back in later. So you are on the sidelines yeah. for a while. Okay, that can be a very good individual strategy. That can save you a lot of losses and let you get in back into the market at a very good entry point. But what if everybody does it? If everybody does the same thing, you end up in a world of all sellers, no buyers, uh, and the stock market goes straight down, blows through the circuit breakers, they shut the market, shut the market again. And if it gets bad enough, they won't just shut the market for 15 minutes. They'll actually close the market. When you close a stock market, and it's happened, by the way, I mean, and a lot, very few people know in 1914, at the beginning of World War I, the New York Stock Exchange was closed for five months from August through December 1914. Um, and people used to take out little classified ads in the newspapers, like meet me on, uh, on New Street behind the stock market, bring your stock certificates and bring cash. And they, they, they called it the curve market because they were trading stocks for cash on the curve. But the point is what people think of li liquid listed equities suddenly turned into private equity. It's not that you don't own it, but you can't trade it. Well, that's, that's what happens. Now, that dynamic of human nature has always been around go back to you know antiquity that that uh that has been around but what happens when you combine it with ai and that's really the point of the book so now more and more we've turned over our trading decisions to ai and i tell people you know you go to a typical financial advisor they're sitting there behind a computer screen and they say uh oh well tell me how old you are and uh are you married? Do you have any kids? And how much do you have in savings? And what are your retirement goals? And they ask you all this, and you think you're getting this like customized consultation. All they do is plug it into an algorithm, and the computer spits out, here's your standard portfolio, 60, 40, and 10 years from now, it should be 80, 20, et cetera. People don't realize that financial advisors are just looking at computer programs and giving you a pretty much of a packaged response to your questions. So we have already had, and there are hedge funds out there that are using AI to pick stocks. Like they don't even pick, the managers don't even pick the stocks. They just say, okay, uh, you know, use artificial intelligence and GPT to build a portfolio. Some of those portfolios have actually performed pretty well in the early days. But again, you get back to the question, what happens when everyone's doing it? So we as investors have handed over a lot of our decision-making, a lot of our investment decision-making to computers. Now, and the computers are programmed by people who are maybe expert engineers and developers, but they don't necessarily know that much about markets, not the way you and I and a lot of other people do. So now you get back to the panic, which always happens, you know, every six, seven years, almost like clockwork. And what does the computer say? It says, sell everything, go to cash and go to the sidelines. It does, you know, but where a human might watch that and say, you know, Things have gone down a lot. Maybe now's the time to dip my toe in the water. Maybe now's the time to come back. Maybe I'm a contrarian. Maybe I ought to be a buyer when everyone else is a seller. And you can make money doing that. But my point is, that's the common sense I was talking about. But the computers don't do that. They're all programmed to do exactly the same thing. Right. So now you have a panic, which could be a thousand reasons. You don't even need to pick a reason. There are plenty of them. It starts. But because we've handed it over to computers, the computers just sell, sell, sell go to cash, go to the silent. There are no buyers. Nobody's dipping their toe in the water. Nobody's standing you know, up to this wave and the market goes straight down. That's the danger. It's human right. nature, which has always been around with AI, which is new. 
the combination and that feedback loop could destroy the markets. Right. So I, I would say the reason this book is so important, it's an early warning system that you, you will be ahead of 99% of the public simply because you explain both financial markets and how AI interacts with it. Whereas right now people are looking at that at, as separate entities. And one of the first things you, I picked up reading this book here is there's a difference between a banking crash and a market crash. So we can all we can all see a stock market crash, a real estate crash, a bond crash, but we cannot see a banking crash. And I think that's one of the most prophetic messages inside this book here is we talk about Silicon Valley Bank and nobody reported about it. And what you cover is how Silicon Valley Bank nearly one more time brought down the world. Uh, it's on bias, censorship, and basically, I call it confabulation. That's a fancy word for lying. And I said, you know, so who who are the gatekeep <laughs> who are the gatekeepers of AI? You know, you, you can get an AI GPT um, app on your iPhone. It like takes about a second to download it. Yeah. But who are the gatekeepers? Who who are actually developing this thing? Well, we know who they are. It's Facebook or Meta. It's Google. It's um, OpenAI, which is part of Microsoft. So Microsoft, Apple, et cetera. They're the gatekeepers. Now think about it. So these people have been lying to us continually for five years, but suddenly we're supposed to trust them on AI? According to Jim Rickards, a key indicator of a bank's safety is the ratio of insured deposits to total deposits. If less than 30% of a bank's deposits are insured, it becomes highly vulnerable to a bank run, which can quickly destabilize it. Rickards warns that such banks pose a significant risk to depositors and emphasizes the importance of choosing financial institutions where a higher percentage of deposits are insured to mitigate the threat of collapse. Rickards distinguishes between banking and capital markets, pointing out that while both are part of the financial system, they operate in fundamentally different ways. While market crashes like those in stocks or real estate are visible and frequently reported, Banking crashes are more insidious and harder to detect. Since banks create money that fuels the economy, a banking collapse has broader and more severe consequences. Investors, Rickards argues, must be mindful of the stability of the banking sector as it is more critical to the functioning of the economy than capital markets. Jim Rickards highlights the fallacy of composition in markets where actions that make sense for individuals, such as selling stocks in a downturn, can lead to disastrous outcomes when done by the entire market. When everyone tries to sell at once, it accelerates the crash. Rickards notes that the rise of AI and trading could exacerbate this, as algorithms may trigger mass selling without human intervention. He advises investors to be cautious of this feedback loop, suggesting that taking a contrarian stance, buying when others are selling, can sometimes be a more strategic approach during market panics.